Well, look who's back. Oh, Pops. Howdy. Happy International Pipe Day. It is, it is, International Pipe Smoking Day. May all your cares go up in smoke. <laughs> We have a guest with us this morning. It ain't morning anymore. We have a guest with us this day. Dang. That's a cardinal. Yeah, it was. Real what close. Was a cardinal landed right there in that bush. Say hello, Mini-Me. That, uh... Huh? Hello, Mini-Me. She's going to join us today. Tell them what you're smoking, Mini-Me. I don't know. You don't know what it is? No, I forgot. Well, show them your pipe, Mini-Me. Tell them what it is. A Dracula. Oh, wow. It's a Peterson Dracula. Do you know what kind of bowl or pipe it is? No. What kind of cut it is? No, I just liked it because it was a Dracula. Because it was a Dracula. Dan, can you tell her what kind of pipe that is? Well, it appears to be a short, bent Dublin. Is that a Dublin? It is a bent Dublin. So what are we in? Oh, and you're smoking... Peach. Fuzzy. She's smoking cheese grits. Cheese grits, yeah. Old Shenandoah fuzzy peach schnapps. Yes. Oh well. And I'm smoking just like I was this morning, my Weber with Orlick Golden Slice. And I've got the elephant foot, the pipe I can't live down, and it's packed with Peace Haven. And I'm lubricating it with a Corona light because I'm out of Australia Jalisco. He's lubricating his. Mm -hmm. I'm washing mine down with a big glass of water. Do I just buy it? Why are you asking? This ain't your first rodeo. You know how to do this. You usually do it for me. You usually do it. You know how to do it. Just don't burn your nose. So how is everybody in the wonderful world of Dizzy? Hmm? Well, at least you've had practice.
don't see one of them very often. Huh? You don't see one of them very often. They're putting in a skate park over by Kids Castle. Are they? I think so. I saw it on Facebook. <clears throat> I should never have given you this pot. Don't say that. Look at that dog. It smokes great. Look at that dog. Where? In my house. On that bicycle? In the house. Oh, in the window? Yeah, in the door. How much is that dog in the window? It's kind of dog, is I can't see that far away. It's a Doberman, a red Doberman. They used to be kind of rare. I've never seen a red one. Well, now I have a red one. That's Dan's friend. What? That red dove is your friend, ain't it? That red what? Doberman. That red Doberman. I, well, he had a chance to kill me and he passed it up. Yeah. So I returned the favor. Yeah. Well, I had it lit for you. I hope that asshole doesn't come out here and start blaring on that stereo. I just don't think... No, I think you broke him with that. Huh? I think you broke him with that. I am not confident of your suspicion of the outcome of that situation. I just... It just defies human nature. I don't... I think it might defy human nature, but it does not defy logic. I don't. Th I don't think he knows about it because if he did, I think he'd be, you know, up in the ante. That's what people do nowadays. No, they up the ante. No. What people do nowadays is try to get along with their neighbors. <laughs> uh, what universe are you from? I don't see it. I don't think pipe smoking is for me. It just doesn't taste like anything. It what? It just doesn't taste like anything. Well, this uh, this Orlick Golden Slice is mighty good. What'd y'all do, swap? No, I got her pipe lit for her and she says it just doesn't taste like anything. It ain't for her. Yeah. Well, it's an aromatic, so it'll smell more like something than it'll taste like something. Yeah. Smell it's it. just the nature of aromatics, I guess. Some of them, you know, I can actually enjoy the taste of them. Oh, that's a nice bite. Is it electric? Well, look how little I she's pedaling. It it's got a battery on the back. Yeah, isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. I wonder if that's what causes her to have headaches. Who are you talking about? That woman running down the road. Ain't that what you were talking about? Yeah, you ought to see that pipe that that guy's wanting built. Went and had. Uh, Did he show you a picture of it? Huh? Did he show you a picture of it? No, he described it. That was good enough. Just... What he wanted. Oh. Uh, just went and had the battery changed in my gold nugget watch I got from my dad. And uh, the jeweler there, ring maker and, and a goldsmith, is wanting me to build him a pipe. And quite a while back, he gave me some jeweler's wax and told me to carve a skull out of it and he'd make a ring for me. And I got sidetracked and I never did finish the, the impression. But um, I went in there to get him to change this, and he had already talked about me building a pipe, and he showed me this wax skull that he had carved, and he's wanting that embedded in the front of the pipe. He's wanting to cast it in gold, 
and then embed it in the front of the pipe. And we were talking about the risks involved in that and the design features that you would have to accommodate to make sure it didn't bite you in the butt later. And uh, I told him about the uh, the deer pipe, deer bone pipe, deer antler pipe I made. It's got the mm -hmm. turquoise inlay. And uh, probably do it similar to that. But uh, I'm going to try to use some gold in the band as well so that it has a like an accent, like two, two areas of gold where you're your eye can drift back and forth, you know. I forget the word I'm looking for. So it sounds like it's going to be a fun build. Well, you know they do. Dan bought you a bag of it not too long ago. Did he? Well, yeah. Whatever happened to it? I don't remember. Well, you've got it somewhere. Maybe that's what my issue is, because right now my mouth tastes like... Well, you need to look around somewhere, because you've got a bag of menthol pipe about it. And I, because I was a menthol cigarette smoker. And I think that's what the issue is. I think I... It's... Well, look around. Look around, because you've got a bag of it somewhere. I think the this, this flavor of the smoke is because it's not menthol-y. It... Well, that's a nice color. Yeah, yeah, it is. I tell you what that I think, good on my Buick. I tell you what I think would look nice on your Buick. The color of the inside of that wheel over there. The color the, of the inside of what? That wheel on the back of his Jeep. The teal? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I had thought about that. Uh, a color very similar to that, yes. Like a medium teal. Looks like they are teal, aren't they? Yeah. Looks like it came off the teal. I despise a blue car, but that's got enough green in it. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll. Like the color of his hose. But if I painted it that color, I should get rid of the vinyl top. Oh, no. Do the whole ah, thing. No. Oh, no. 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 You've said that ever since you've had that Buick. Huh? You've said that ever since you've had that Buick. Yeah, I know. Y'all don't like it? Huh? Y'all don't like it? Well, as a general rule, I'm, I'm one of the, the purists that uh, like it all in color. Uh, the, uh, there are some who view a vinyl top as a blemish on a car. Um, there's a seam on the C-pillar on old GM cars. I'm sure American Motors run the same problem as Mopar. But there's a seam where they weld the roof to it and it goes across the C-pillar. And if they can't get it perfectly smooth where you can't see the ripple, they'll send that body down the, the line to get a vinyl pop. I'm going to show you all what this guy drives. Look at this. It's filthy. It's a 70 Le Mans. Now, I don't know if you can see or not with the sun shining on it right there like that. Yeah, they're dirty. They're dirty. And Gracie's right. I'm not going to show you the license plate. But he drives that. Oh, and he wants you to see the steering wheel. Get the gas pedal. And the gas pedal. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see it or not. But he drives that. And his other car, the one we're talking about, the Buick, uh, I don't think he brought any out here. I don't know if he is that one. And he's talking about taking that black vinyl top off. I like it. I do too. The black top? 
and he's talking about painting it. And I don't think he, you know, I don't think he's got such a bad idea right there painting it. But he's talking about painting it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the teal color in the center of that wheel. I don't know if you can see it or not. But that would look good on the back of that, on, on that car right there. That teal color. But I don't think you ought to take the... Uh, I don't think you ought to take the... You don't have any pipe cleaners out here, do you? Uh, I'll get you one right quick. Oh, well, thank Put you, sir. Put the camera back around. Thanks. There we are. There we are! Did you have an incident with that dog? Huh? Did you have an incident with that dog? Well, he's just a, just, you know, a, oh, thank you. Aside from being an all-around asshole, he's just an irresponsible dog owner, and and uh, it's a it's a full-grown, I mean, attack mode looking Doberman, you know. So it's got the visual Are we stereotype when the thing comes running at you. The first thing you do is uh, you wonder whether you're going to live. <laughs> but Are I was uh, came home one life? night late, and I went to check my mail, and he was out there and he was seeing someone off and I don't know whether I don't I didn't see the dog you know and all of a sudden I checked my mail and I turned around and head back this way and he had gone around me and approached me from this side and jumped up on me and was all over me and uh, of course it startled me and uh, I kind of put my hands on him and and uh, he went back down and and ran off and as he was leaving I told him I said it's a good thing you're not a biter you'd be dead by now oh tell her the rest huh? tell her the rest I can't remember the rest he told him he said uh, he said I just love a dog that's smarter than its owner with a man standing right out there listening, he said, I love a dog that's smarter than its owner. That guy over there with the hat on reminds me of Joe. Right. A white old man. I'd almost pray to you. Yeah, that is a pretty color. Yeah, that looked real good on that beauty. I came home, I think it was uh, the night before last, I believe it was, and it was 27 degrees. And those guys, and those guys had their garage doors open and the lights on in there till, I don't know, one or two o'clock. I mean, I understand people hanging out in their garage because they got a big screen TV out there. Yeah. He's got his organ and everything. And yeah. But geez Louise, 27 degrees? This guy over here, Catacorner to him, 
he's got a big B3 organ and he uh, plays professionally at horse shows and other events. Boy, you got to be a serious garage potato to do that, I tell you. Yeah, he sits over here and practices on the weekends when he doesn't have an event to play. And I swear it sounds like a, a baseball game or a hockey game. It's a, it's real fun to listen to. I mean, it, it sounds like you're sitting in the stands at a at a ball game. Really not real nice people. Huh? I was telling them it's real nice people over here. Yeah, he usually plays the organ mostly on Wednesday rather than Tuesday. Oh, is it? Is it Wednesday? Huh? I didn't know what day it was he practiced, but. It's Dang, a lot of fun to sit and listen to. Them old men are way over on the other side of the block now. They walk fast, don't they? What people? At the circus. Acrobats? No. What are you talking about? The ones that jump on the trampoline, the bouncers. I've always heard them called acrobats. That's not what I'm talking about. Well, then you've got one on me because I don't know what you're talking about. But then again, I'm a. You did the other night. I'm not. To, How do you know one day and not the next? Hey. <laughs> it's no trick for me. You live with me. You should know that. Thunder. <laughs> you know what you say to someone farts, don't you? What? You say, well, your voice is changing, but your breath still smells the same. Yeah. <laughs> you say that all the time. Well, I get it honestly. That was one my dad always said. I'm going to guess, huh? I said, I'm going to guess as fast as them two old men were walking that they live somewhere in between there and there. On that. Who do? Them two old men. Oh. Because I saw them in between them two houses. But I ain't seen them there But I ain't there. seen them there yet. Right. That's what I was thinking. So they live somewhere in between I've there. been watching them see them come. Yeah. <laughs> They ain't made it, so they live somewhere in between there and there. I'm about out. Yep, I am too, and I'm gurgling. You think they're a couple? I didn't pack this up specifically <laughs> for this video. I've been pumping on this for a bit this morning. Um, I'm about ready for another bowl of it. If, uh... If well, I we've had, seen if, them walking together before. If I had to think that... I'd, I'd think that they were a couple of friends. That's not something I really want to think about, Gracie. Oh, whatever. Well, these are some nice pipe cleaners. Where'd you get these? Mule Town. Really? Yeah, somebody um, somebody gave them to me in that sleeve. They're nice and poofy. Yeah, they were already in that sleeve and I'm trying to remember who it was. 
Uh, 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 oh, somebody had them sleeves made up and had them loaded up with pipe cleaners already and, and had, I don't know, had 50 or 60 of them and they were passing them out. I can't remember who it was. I want to say it was uh, Ethan. Come here. I want to say it was Camaro. Ethan. I just said that. You didn't point. You didn't point. Yeah, Dan, I want to say it was Parsimonious Piper. Do you know who I want? I want to say it was Parsimonious Piper. Well, if you want to, do it. Um, Go ahead and say it. I could be, be wrong. Be that way. Say I, it. I could be wrong. What? I've made a 64-year career out of being wrong. <laughs> Ever since I was able to talk, I've been wrong. Yeah, I got on this Virginia Jag. I got on this Orlick Jag. I had a, a tin of it that I smoked. I drug out a jar of uh, Red Virginia Crumble Cake last night. Hadn't tried it yet. I did open it to smell it. Boy, it smells a lot different. But then again, you know, uh, Virginia's respond to age better than most anything, so. I went up to the Peace Haven in 3D. <laughs> I went up to the humidor not too long ago. Where? Oh, yeah and was looking at um, the tins that they had up there of Orlick. Well, I was looking at all the tins they had, and I was, they had a tin of Orlick, a real thick tin and a thin tin. And I was standing there debating on whether or not to buy one. I remember trying it a couple of years back, and it just didn't, it didn't set too well with me. What was that? Orlick Golden Slice. Oh. And I was standing there debating on whether or not to try it again. And uh, an old boy sitting over there on the couch asked me if I wanted to try it. He said he had some in his bag. When they actually had a pipe smoker in there? Yeah, they had two or three of them. But uh, he asked me if I wanted to try it, and I loaded up out of his tin and tried it, and it was a whole lot better than I remember it being. So I bought, I, I tried it, sat there and smoked a bowl of it. That's one of the things that I am so intrigued by uh, in pipe smoking is how how you can change your mind about a tobacco, or maybe a tobacco will change yeah. your mind about it, or yeah, well, well you'll, you know, you'll hate it one time, you'll try it again, you'll love it. It's well, it's you know, foods weird. are that foods are that way too. Huh? Foods are that way too. Your taste buds change. Not so, do what? Not he is. <laughs> Now, 
No, uh, yeah, his does too. I've seen him uh, here recently. I've seen him eating foods that uh, lately, or that uh, in the past, he wouldn't have never eat. Is that bike laying on the ground? Does that thing ever move? I don't think I've ever seen that bike never picked oh. up or moved. Uh, it's always laying in their yard. It's never, you know, it's never in the same place, but it's always laying in that yard. Sometimes it's out closer to the street. It's too cold to be out there doing it three quarters naked. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I can understand people jogging. It's supposed to have been 60 degrees today. Well, but I don't believe it hit it. No, I don't think it quite hit it. Uh, it's supposed to be 66 tomorrow. It's supposed to be 70 for the end of the week. Ain't it supposed to rain tomorrow? I think it's supposed to rain Thursday. And be 70 Friday and Saturday. Or 68 Friday and 70 Saturday. I'll tell you something I'd like to try, I hadn't tried in a while. It's some uh, Star of the East Flake. Oh, yeah. I tell you something that surprised me that uh, James Stumbo turned me on to. I didn't think I was going to like as well as I do. That damn Triple Crown from Milan. I really like that. Yeah, that's awesome. I was reading about that last night, and uh, there was something interesting about it. I can't call. I thought it was really cool. Can't can't remember what it was. Yep. Did you see the Nazis come to town the other night or the other day? See who? That group of Nazis come protesting. You didn't see it? I didn't even hear about it. Huh? Yeah. Nobody knew about it. Nobody knew they was coming. Wasn't no protesters there. Wasn't nobody there to support them.
group of about 75 of them with uh, black black masks, red shirts, and black flags with swastikas marching on the Capitol. Here in Murfreesboro? No, in Nashville. Oh. Come to find out, they did some investigating on it. Come to find out, it was a group of paid actors. Well, sure. Probably each one of them got a check off of Craigslist from George Soros. See, I got a way to stop that shit. It's real simple. Sheriffs all across the country, listen up. Sheriffs have more power than the federal government in a local area. Yeah. If they use it right. You want to protest and you arrive at the protest site indiscriminately or every single one, depending on the whether you got the personnel for the security, you just check IDs. If they live within fifty miles of the site of the protest, come on in. You got a right to say what goes on around here. If you live out of state or far away, you're given the opportunity to walk away. If not, you get arrested and you may never see the light of day in this little old town. That'll stop that shit right there. Well, you see, that's all they did. Speaking of walking away, that's all they did. They walked from the sidewalk on the street where they were dropped off. They walked from the sidewalk up to the mezzanine there at the uh, square at the uh, um, the Capitol building, and they stood there long enough for the news to film them. They waved their flags, and then they marched back down to where they were, and they walked about five six hundred feet to a bus. They boarded that bus, got on it, and drove off. No, that's weird. No, uh, no, uh, no, no real protest. No, uh, that sounds like an element of something larger. Oh, it was, uh, it was just to be seen. That was all. Yeah, they just wanted to be seen and filmed. You've got mail. Huh? You've got mail. Yes, I do. They used to be my favorite part of you turning on your computer. Oh, You've got mail. Back when I had AOL. You've got mail. Yeah. I hated all the all the noises that it used to make sounding on. for a steak. Oh, wow. I'm always in the mood for steak. Oh, that thing you sent me. Is that, uh, you place an order for the shrimp and then you go pick it up, right? Yeah. Oh. It's shrimp and crab and crawfish and lobster and oysters. That's what they have. But it's that, you know that little building that's behind Toots on Broad Street? Yeah. It's that place. Yeah. But, they're, but they're just setting up a separate delivery point for the orders. Yeah, them boys go down to the coast and pick all that up and bring it back up. Yeah. They do that themselves. So you don't pick it up behind two, right? I think you do, don't you? I believe so. They come up in a truck with uh, everything's iced down. I wonder what the prices are because I know you can get just like in the supermarket, you can get a pound of uh, scallops for 
anywhere from seven to eleven dollars. Then you go over there at that Bubba Gump, and it's like freaking one hundred and sixteen dollars a pound. I don't know whether what the hell's the, makes up the price difference on something like that, but. Well, Bubba Gump, he travels to like Louisiana and Florida and Texas and all over weekly. Yeah, they got tons of stuff. Yeah, yeah. all his he, stuff is fresh I follow, off the boat. I follow him on Facebook too. All of his stuff's fresh off the boat. And he is gone like literally weekly. He, but Louisiana uh, Seafood Company, they travel weekly as well yeah. to uh, Louisiana to get. I know at Costco you can get four lobsters tail about that big and about 50 bucks for four of them but at uh, Bubba Gump they got them they're, they're $52 a piece and I will say this wow the, the price increase on the lobster tails is worth it those things are amazing but I just don't have the the heart to hit my wallet that hard to try $116 a pound scholars. I've never eaten anything that was worth $52. Well, you need to try one of them lobster tails because they are amazing. They're so big, I ate on one of them for two days. They're not like the ones you get at Costco, they're about like this. Just a tail. Excuse me. I apologize. No, I don't. I'm, re I'm really not that sorry. But I'm in the mood for some more scallops. I haven't had scallops in a while. <laughs> I'm really not that sorry. And I want to revive my project of uh, developing a recipe for oysters bienville. That's How long has that been going on? Well, I've been noodling with that for shoot more than 10 years yeah it's been a long time but I put it on the back burner and then come back to it I still have never tried an oyster so I don't even know boy that's an acquired taste if you hate them you're gonna really hate them well the best way the, the best way, in my opinion, to ensure that someone who's never tried oysters ends up loving oysters with a clothespin is to uh, have them fried first. Have fried oysters first. Yep. Then branch out from that. Uh, I just think oysters Bienville is probably the most decadent thing I have ever eaten in my life. Yep. It, it's yep. Well, it's the most you. decadent way to eat oysters. I'd stack it up with just about anything I've ever had, I tell you. It's... Uh, I wonder if Harpoon Harry's carries oysters being I'll I don't know. I don't know. I need to call and ask. Because I know that's my favorite restaurant of all. And shoot, if anyone served oysters Bienville, it ought to be them. Yeah, you'd think. Them with the brass lantern. I well, that'd be uh, that place you sent me that thing. or That'd be a good place to get the oysters to make the Bienville. Yeah. yeah. I'd be for checking to see if the Brass Lantern's still, uh, still up and running in Gatlinburg. Well, I'm not driving to Gatlinburg just to eat. Shoot. If the Brass Lantern was still up and running, I would. I just get claustrophobic when I go to Gatlinburg. Yeah, I know. I heard that. Well, it's up on the other end of Gatlinburg, up near Airport Road. Things open up a little more the deeper you go in there, I think. Yeah, yeah, they do. I'll stick to Pigeon Forge. That's my soul spot. Soul place. You've heard of Soulmates? I believe there's a soul place. Yeah. A place where you just, you feel centered. I know where mine's at. I know where mine's at.
Mine is anywhere in the city city limits of Pigeon Forge. I'm happy. Mine's at my wife's house. What? My wife's house. Your wife's house? Yeah. Anywhere where she calls home. Do you remind that? Yeah. Where? Under my feet. <laughs> You're so funny. Yeah, I bet you're sitting there wondering how in the hell does he guess right every time. I was going to say Swanee. Swanee. <laughs> which would be under your feet. On which trail? Yeah, right. <laughs> There's 15 different trails there. Which Love one? Them. I want to go on the one where you have to go up and cross through that freaking... The Owl Trail or the Sam Trail? Or the Steve trail? No. The one that, remember, you have to, not the bridge, but it's like a little cave thing that you have to crawl through to get to the other side the of hole. the trail. Yeah, that's the owl trail. Is it? Yeah. Well, you know, they got that bridge, that, that suspension bridge up there. Mm. That's, uh... Not at Swanee. That's, not at Swanee. That's South Cumberland Trail. Oh, I thought y'all were still talking about Gallenberg. Mm. Oh, no. They've got a suspension bridge at South Cumberland. Remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to hit up Anakista when I go. Yeah. They got yeah. They got a new light show up there. It's like you're walking among the falling stars or something. I don't know. It's a it's immersive and it's about a half a mile walk. That sounds really cool. Yeah, it does. I mean, you should see some of the footage of it. It's amazing. I remember about the third time we went to the South Cumberland Trail, we took uh, Maya Penfold, a little friend of Gracie's, with us. We went across that uh, suspension bridge. Me and Gracie just tripped right on across it. And Maya got about a quarter of the way across and just froze, just solid, just froze, and that was it, she wasn't moving, she was not going to move, what was she, about nine, ten, I don't know, we might have been younger than that, but she was just froze, I can't deal with heights, I can't deal with it, what, the vertigo? Well, I was like that the first the time vertigo? I did it. No, the bald ass, that is a big ass way up here and I'm going to be pounded to pemmican if I fall in here. <laughs> just, just the pure unmitigated, hey, that's a long drop. Yeah. You know? Well, well you remember how I freaked out in the freaking blue just, building elevator. Oh, yeah. yeah. It just overwhelms my senses and my judgment. We weren't even halfway you know, up, and I was like, I can't do You know the lone silo that they've got uptown? The one high rise? You know what I'm talking about? The one high rise that we have uptown? Like the building? Yeah. I guess. When they first built that. Who? When they first built them. I took Gracie up in that elevator, that glass front elevator. We got up to about the eighth floor. It's got 14 floors on it. We got up to about the eighth floor. All of a sudden, her knees start buckling and she starts grabbing for stuff. And it was... <clears throat> You can sense how high up you are. Oh yeah. In the elevator. Yeah. I started. Especially when the, especially when the whole front window is glass. Oh. I started bawling my eyes out, and I said, "I can't do it! I can't do it! I can't do it!" Well, the the bad part about it was we could not stop it. It had to go all the way to the top before we could turn it around and go back down. I was watching the internal mechanisms of the fastest elevator in America the other day on uh, Facebook. I can't remember where it was, but it, they had cameras showing the, how fast it was moved from outside the elevator room 
see the cables and the walls and everything whizzing by and everything. And I just got to thinking, you know, uh, bungee jumping is inherently dangerous. Oh, yeah. Getting on a plane is inherently dangerous. And I thought, you know, riding in an elevator in a building that tall is also inherently dangerous. Well, well there is. Well. Yeah. Well, there's one in New York City. I don't remember which building it's in, but there's one that's like 60 something stories in New York City that from the top floor to the bottom floor, it's supposed to fall at a free fall. It's supposed to go that fast at a freaking free fall before it gets to the bottom floor. And, and, then it, and then it slows down as it gets like to the, about the 20th floor before it gets to the bottom floor, it starts slowing down. But it, they say it falls at a free fall. No thanks. No. Not interested. I can't do it. No, no sir. At the football stadium at MTSU, on the very top bleacher, they've got the well, the bleachers are sunk into the concrete right in front of poles that are also sunk into the concrete, and then the chain link fence is like ten feet, you know, on uh, you know behind from coming up from behind the seats, so that you can actually stand on those seats that bleacher and. You're right about like chin level with the top of the fence. How the hell are you going to fall over that? Yet I cannot stand on that seat and hold on to that fence and look. I can't do it. I just turned to jelly. You can imagine what uh, that movie Fall did to me. Yeah, that that movie literally made me nauseous to watch. What the hell? You know, I see videos of people doing that in real life. I'm thinking, why? Why we, who gets that bored that they would need to do something like that? Huh? I hate a blue car, but the colors that grab my attention the most are odd blues. I don't know why. Fire that organ up. Let's try out some of this. What hey. you got, Joy de Vivre? Joy de Vivre. Huh? Joy de Vivre. Give me one of them, uh, give me one of them, uh, uh, pipe cleaners. Thank you. Oh, duty. Mm. Seeing you move around here takes away my, uh, what do you call it? Joy to Viva? 
Which you ought to be. Well, if you're going to laugh at me, the hell with you. Name that movie. Uh, Y'all can play at home, too. Big Lebowski. Nope. What? Spoiler alert. Oh. Miller's Crossing. Well, it was the right director anyway. Huh? It was the right director anyway. You know, I think I like these uh, Corona lights better than the Corona P Premier. I've heard that. And I, I picked the Premier, and I thought I had made the right choice. And then I saw underneath it, oh, wow. it says, an exceptional light beer. And this one doesn't say it. So I thought, smell well, maybe that. I chose Tell the right you one. Smell ketchup. But I'll drink one of these, and I think well, maybe I didn't. Saucer. That's the Virginia in that. That's what you get when you when you smell of Virginia. It's a ketchupy kind of a yeah. citrusy, grassy, yeah. grassy, 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 citrusy, citrusy, kind of nutty, kind of earthy. <laughs> Let the adjective orgies ensue. Dan, this is all the way back to 2018. Well, I knew it had a, a, a couple of years on it. Couple? It's got six years on it. I think this Peace Haven here is uh, 2015. Really? I think so. I got some old squadron leader in there too. It's uh, boy, you can't go wrong with squadron leader, boy. Mm -hmm. That's good. I tell you one I don't like. That squadron leader with Parik. Ah, uh, you know. And I generally like Parik. You know, what, what, are you, what are you going to expect from me? I'm, I'm going to follow that under the category you can ruin a damn good thing. I think a uh, squadron leader doesn't need any help at all, especially with adding something like that. Yeah. I'm just not a fan. I, I don't, I, I'm not big on Perique. But I love Latakia. I can smoke that straight, but no Perique for me. Somebody was asking earlier today who had a good blending Latakia other than Cornell and Deal. <clears throat> Well, if you were going to blend with it, uh, I mean, right off the bat, uh, you would want to source it in bulk. And uh, Cornell and Deal makes a decent one. Uh, I've got a freaking gob of it, but there are better ones, but they're getting more and more and more rare, I think. Because yeah, they are. It's, it's just hard to... Well, they're getting rare because the Syrian doesn't exist anymore. That doesn't affect the production of the Kiprium. No, it just makes... You can just start cranking that, that out like nobody's business, but... I was going to look up right up on that McClellan's blend that I've got that big old 
container of, but it's not in my uh, log list. What? What is it? Uh, it's uh, it's Cyprian mixture. I think it's twenty uh, twenty forty. Yeah. I think. Can you find out something? I know McBaron's has got a. McBaron's has got a real good Latakia. A couple of them. That's pretty good. We were unable to find any brands matching your search. Are you fucking kidding me? Something's up with this site, man, I'm telling you. Find it this way. Two hundred thirty-four blends. Wow. Well, they had some good blending uh, stuff in their day. Who? McClellan's? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They were something. Number 5110, Dark English. It gets a 3.01 rating. That's, uh, that's unusual. I, I figured it would be higher than that. That stuff is awfully good. How many minutes are we up to over there? Huh? How many minutes are we up to over there? I have no, way, I have no idea how to tell. All right, here it is, Cyprian mixture. It's an English. Yeah, the same three stars. It's a broken flake. Packaged in bulk. I don't know why I didn't log that. Oh my! What? We're at an hour and seven minutes. That's what we've run? Yeah. Is that good or bad? Well, it's about to run out. What a little hold. Shooting straight like that about an hour and fifteen.
Well, you know what we could do? We could go ahead and sign off now and then just keep on rolling and then we can, uh, you can take what we did after we signed off up to the time that it clicks off and cut that off and patch it into the end before we sign off. Yeah, I reckon I could. Ain't that a stroke of genius? Just means I'd have to edit. Ain't no stepper a stepper. No, I reckon not. Boy, this stuff's good. Well, we lost one of our fellas. You lost what? Lost one of our fellas. She's decided it's too cold to sit out here. Well, I went and got my jacket. So, I reckon we're going to call an end to this. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Huh? Hope y'all enjoyed it. Happy 320. We should have smoked Next 320s on 320. I guess we should have. Next month, about this time, we'll uh, we'll come back and uh, celebrate with you again on 420. Not me. I'm a respectable citizen. Well, it don't mean we can't come back and celebrate with them. Okay. Just another day. Wait a minute. No, it's 220. Then what was 320? Today. No, it's not. Today is February. And this is February. Yeah, that's 220. Yeah. I guess 320 is just a day when you should go buy a, a, a good 320. Yeah, 320. You'll be in, uh, you'll be in Pigeon Forge on 320. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll be there by then. You'll be celebrating. <laughs> yeah, I'm... Um, I'm going to take in a bunch of nice places to eat. I'm going to hit uh, Smoky Mountain Brewery. I love that place. The place is awesome. But my favorite place, Harpoon Harry's. I'm going to eat breakfast there on my birthday. Then I'm going to go back and eat lunch there. Then I'm going to go to the motel, take a nap. Then I'm going to go back and eat supper there. You're not going to eat breakfast at the motel? Not that day. I enjoyed eating breakfast there at the motel. They got a great breakfast. They do. Especially that omelet guy. Man, I tell you what, that place, uh, there's not a, not a bad thing I can say about it. I just love it. The only bad thing I can say about that, th that place is that my name ain't on the deed. <laughs> if I won the lottery, I would buy that place. And my orientation speech would be if you if you work here you still work here carry on I would change your thing about it except one of the rooms would be mine permanently yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was fixing to the say the inn at Christmas place stay there at least once in your life If you don't, you don't know what you're missing. Just leave the world behind when you go there. They got the improvements done to the lightning rod in Dollywood. I think it'll be open 
Um, the second week of March. Really? The lightning rod. So they're bringing it back. Well, what they did was they did some repairs on the 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 incline and made it faster, and oh. it was already pretty fast. You know, no, nothing's more anticlimactic on a nice roller coaster than to reach the incline and it goes clink, 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 clink. Then two minutes later, you're at the top. No, that thing is just whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. I want to ride as many of those roller coasters up there as I can. I want to get me a Dolly Christmas hoodie. Well, I just want Dolly in my hoodie for Christmas. Boy, I tell you what. What a gal. Did you hear her response to uh, that L girl that showed up drunk at her birthday celebration? What L girl? Oh, it was some girl that was performing on stage at the Grand Ole Opry um, during her birthday celebration. And she just really got foul mouth and oh I heard about this but I didn't I didn't know any in detail about it. did you hear you didn't hear Dolly's reaction to it I may have but I forgot it oh she was so diplomatic well sure oh man you couldn't she, have asked she, for she's got class everybody else was giving that girl down the road and just her fans had turned against her and Dolly came out and finally broke her silence and she said, look, she said, everybody makes mistakes and everybody has a bad night. She said, we need to cut that girl some slack. She said, she has made a mistake and she's going to have enough bad publicity on her and she's, she's, she's got a lot to make up for. Now, we need, we need to back up off. Well, she's more diplomatic than me because look, mistakes are mistakes, but intentionally, when you get on stage with a microphone in front of your puss for a living, and you choose of your own volition to utter profanities in front of a crowd full of children, that ain't a mistake. Well, that is vicious socio-political manipulation. It it was a, it was it was a bad scene. What she did, I can't I can't remember what her last name was. L. King, I believe. But it, but it was not a mistake. It was a vicious act of of, of uh, domestic terrorism. Well, she didn't the get space? up there and and you know she didn't get up there and threaten anyone or. You know, she just, she got up there and, and... So there's that then. You know, but she did... Get up there and fill little ears with a bunch of profanity is enough. You don't need to threaten anybody. I think the problem is, up until now, all along, We've been giving these miscreants too much leeway already. That's our problem. That's why we're we're in the situation we're in right now. Well, I just thought Dolly was very diplomatic about it and very forgiving. And, that, and she's a smart woman. It only makes her look better. Well, she uh, she looked very good. She looked she, what she did was she demonstrated something that she knows full well they are absolutely, completely and totally incapable 
of demonstrating in that it's compassion and understanding of the other side. That's off their radar now. They, they only know one thing, force and coercion. Well, they, they couldn't have asked for a better, a better demonstration from a better ambassador of country music. Well, sure. She, she's got a, got a lot of class. She sure did demonstrate why, she, uh, why she's the queen of country music. Anyway, as I was saying, we're signing off. I'm old pops. Toodles. Much love, y'all.